Nice to meet you, Alice. So, what do you do for a living? Uh, well, I do several things. I'm a student, I'm a tennis instructor, and I also do YouTube videos. You're a YouTuber. Was that a dream of yours to become a YouTuber? Well, I don't have one dream job. <laughs> okay, Alice, I'm gonna be very honest with you. I've watched all your videos, and I know I can help you make a ton of money. Mm, why me? First of all, because I find you very pretty. I know it's a bit lame and even hormonal, but I know how to recognize beauty, so you can thank your parents and their genetic code. How do I get out of here? So I thought we could work as a couple. A team, yeah. Anyway, I think Trump is a good example of success because he has one, people's support, and two, he's financially free. You have the first one, I can give you the second. Well, I'm not sure I want to be part of this. I can help you create passive income streams. <sighs> nope. <laughs> this is how the world works, Alice. I don't care, I'm a leftist. I first came across the I don't dream of labor, I don't have a dream job YouTube trend a few weeks ago and it spoke to me. Most of the women I had a chance to listen to were accomplished, smart and confident individuals who not only shared their life experiences but put them in the perspective of our system, our economic system and how it brainwashes us. You may have discovered this channel thanks to the alternative self-help video where I stated that uh, there are two ways in which we can approach the toxicity of our work culture. Either we work on ourselves to improve our ability to cope with that system, that's what most alternative self-help channels promote, or we decide to direct our energy outwards towards social change, uh, better rights and activism. While the I don't dream of labor video show us that the two aren't mutually exclusive, let me explain. <laughs> Just as it is the case with traditional alternative self-help, the discussion is centered around the I, the individual, their experience with the typical 9-to-5 job and the epiphany they've had, namely that they don't dream of labor or don't want to follow the typical get a degree in a 9-to-5 job. Yet that statement is quite bold because it goes against an established system that relies on people's internalized discipline and ever-increasing productivity. Imagine if all of us woke up one day and said, I don't dream of labor, I quit my job. Well, that would be revolutionary. We would have to invent a brand new system in order to survive, and we would have to completely change the way we approach work. So according to Dupré et Gagné, there are four different conceptions of work, and they work by pairs. First, there is toil and trouble and self-fulfillment. Second, there is transformation of nature for use. So I thrifted this pair of jeans for myself or transformation of nature for exchange. So I thrifted this pair of jeans to sell it on Depop. What I want to focus on is the first couple, so toil and trouble and self-fulfillment, because I feel like it's very relevant to the I don't dream of labor videos. The idea of toil and trouble comes from Adam Smith, the capitalist, who said that what everything really costs to the man who wants to acquire it is the toil and trouble of acquiring it. No pain, no gain, basically. Then Karl Marx, the Marxist, and John Stuart Mill, the social democrat, also highlighted the importance of work as necessary for the realization of the full humanity of the individual. So as a form of self-fulfillment is the idea that through work, individuals can acquire new skills, they can socialize, organize, and contribute to society in a meaningful way. Finally, in the 1930s, John Maynard Keynes predicted that by the early 21st century, capital growth, improving productivity and technological advances should have brought us to the foothills of an economic promised land in which everybody's basic needs were easily satisfied and where, as a result, nobody worked more than 15 hours a week. And here we are, we're still at level one, toil and trouble, despite the rise of automation, Despite the fact that workers have become more and more productive, you cannot deny the fact that there is something very unfair going on here. Like, who really capitalizes on that extra productivity and that fear of losing your job to automation, a robot? Well, not the workers. And that disappointment is conveyed in the I don't dream of labor, I don't have a dream job videos. They argue that you've been lied to, that conforming to the system can be detrimental for your mental health and that, you know, work isn't always fulfilling. 
So they advocate for shorter work weeks, for meaningful job and for fulfillment and personal happiness over economic growth. These arguments support the theory of degrowth, which has become very popular lately. If you're not familiar with this term, even though you can pretty much guess what it means, it's an idea that critiques our globalized system which pushes growth at all costs, causing human exploitation and environmental destruction. The degrowth movement of activists and researchers advocate for societies that prioritize social and ecological well-being instead of corporate profits overproduction and excess consumption. This requires radical redistribution, reduction in the material size of the global economy, and a shift in common values towards care, solidarity, and autonomy. Pretty self-explanatory, but I have one question. How do we get there? Because the I don't dream of labor trend can seem a bit superfluous if it doesn't lead us to rethink the way we approach work, not on an individual, but on a societal level. And that is precisely when contradictions within that trend emerge. Is the only solution starting a YouTube channel or starting a business or monetizing your passion and fighting capitalism with capitalism? In a way, I think it is. For this second part, I'm going to focus on Lena Datkin's videos because she's one of the few YouTubers who also articulated solutions to that problem we're all facing. And so I wanted to discuss or nuance what she said and you know, just start a dialogue and share a different perspective. Having watched a lot of her videos now, it feels like Lynette's core cool message is that we need to reclaim power over our lives. She said we need to create a world where everyone has access to their dream lives. And so she encourages her viewers to start a YouTube channel, to become an influencer, develop passive streams of income so that you have more time to do what you want. She promotes financial freedom, something that we all dream about, but that nobody can really quantify. Her philosophy is coherent with Tim Ferriss' four-hour workweek bestseller book that marked the beginning of a new era in the realm of self-help, entrepreneurship and hustle culture. In his book, Ferriss detailed how you can become super rich, financially free, uh, location independent by creating an online business, grind for a few months or years, and then outsource the work as much as possible, invest your profits into stocks and live off passive income streams. Modern Capitalism 101, something that Smith, Stuart Mill and the other ones had not anticipated. And what I find interesting with Lynette's approach is that, yes, it's very much inspired by Tim Ferriss' philosophy, but she strives to be more ethical and not fall into that selfish capitalist trap. She said, I'm gonna choose to work my ass off and keep losing sleep until I can make enough money and give it back to you guys. That very sentence makes me think of the trickle-down theory, which is largely based on the idea of you get rich and then you give back to the poor. But it doesn't work. It has never worked. Philanthropy doesn't work. You know, wealth inequalities have never been that high since pre-World War I. So it's my personal opinion, but I truly believe that there is no good or bad capitalist, or that we need more good, ethical capitalists to counterbalance the damage that has been done by the bad ones. Yet at the same time, we have to recognize that entrepreneur culture, hustle culture, self-help, or stockholders are overrepresented by white men, and that women and people of color aren't investing, generating passive income streams as much. And so people like Lynette and other content creators are actually trying to bridge that gap in the most ethical way possible, promising to take care of their employees, to provide for them, and to give back to their community. While traditional self-help gurus will tell you that if you want to be financially free and join the richest 1%, then you have to go onto their websites and buy their course. While Lynette uses her platform to create a sort of interclass solidarity, each class helping the lower one to emancipate, to give back, yet, and that's so frustrating, she's still very, very focused on the empowered, ethical individual as a solution to fight dirty capitalism when there are so many things we can do as a collective. Because let's be honest, while we're escaping the constraints of the 9-to-5 job to switch to an online job, and I include myself into that, you know, I'm not a full-time YouTuber, but it's always been a dream of mine to become my own boss, while other people are fighting and advocating for better rights. I immediately think about the French Ibis Hotel's housekeepers who fought for higher pay and less rooms to clean per hour, 
and just one after 22 months of negotiation. That is the reality of work for the majority of people and they don't have the option to switch to online jobs. To conclude, I still strongly believe that those videos, the I Don't Dream of Labour videos, are very positive because they encourage the viewers to unlearn, to question, to think critically. I feel like those conversations have uncovered one layer of a massive problem and that we need to build upon those videos, that trend, to dig deeper and really try to question the roots of that problem so that more and more people unlearn and realize that maybe it's time to move on to something different, to rethink society. By the way, while I was researching for this video, I ended up watching Nat's video uh, on the same topic and she recommended a bunch of books. Uh, I've used some of them for this video and put them in the sources. So if you want to check that video, I highly recommend it. Um, I'm going to put all the links down below. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always, we can continue that discussion in the comment section. Don't forget to like to subscribe if you like the video and you want more and yeah i'll see you next week salut